You've tuned in to Stranger Than Fiction News, broadcasting live from the dark side of the planet. What happened in October 2019? We had Event 201. On October 18th, we had Crimson Contagion. And we had the military games in Wuhan. A lot of things are starting to add up as the lockdown rolls out throughout the world. Martial law everywhere, restrictions, suspension of civil rights, and we're just getting the big breaking news. 21 million dead in China according to cell phone records. And of course in China they need their cell phones for everything, including to go out and to uh, present their documentation according to news reports. We're going to be getting into the latest news as well as what's going on with the uh, hydroxychloroquine and the like. Lots of news to cover. How's everybody doing out there in the matrix? We're broadcasting live on the screw tube out there. Lots to cover. Lots of news to cover. Crimson Contagion October 2019, as you can see here, Event 201, preparing for a worldwide pandemic, October 2019. The military games in Wuhan, October 2019. Is that too much of a coincidence to ignore? Is there something else going on? There's two competing scenarios right now. Superpowers are accusing each other of releasing this bioweapon. We're learning all sorts of things about the Event 201, and uh, it, was, uh, it, it, it was sponsored by John Hopkins and Bloomberg. John Hopkins is the university that's making that nice little map for everybody. And uh, we're starting to hear you know, more familiar names, more familiar stories. We'll be getting into that and so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got the news. Have you guys seen anything strange out there? Anything strange and unusual? Let us know in the comments. And we're starting to get uh, more and more footage of the goon squad showing up. This is not in China. We're getting reports in Germany and Panama of goon squads going door to door. We'll be getting into that. But of course, uh, the big news here, 21 million dead. How many, did, how many people did they lock down at the height of the lockdown? We remember seeing reports of 300, 350 million people. And so if 21 million people are dead out of the 350 million people, you know, we're somewhere around 5% kill rate, which would mean that, uh, you know, we would expect 21 million people in America to die. But maybe it'll be less than that, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe only half of that. The Surgeon General says that it's going to get ugly this week. Every major city is basically taking over, uh, you know, the uh, sports arenas, the super domes and the like, and turning them into field hospitals, into gas chambers, if you will. And it's going to be the poor people that get it the worst. I have no doubt about it. The, you know, the ghettos, the big cities are going to get liquidated hardcore. And this is just the beginning of the story, but uh, the closing of 21 million cell phone accounts has been confirmed by the authorities out there, and we're getting numerous reports of that effect. 21 million people gone, vanished, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about that? And of course there's competing theories uh, as far as where this virus came from. Some people are saying Fort Detrick, like the anthrax attacks of 9-11. Who remembers 9-11 out there, ladies and gentlemen? Anyone? Anyone? Latest numbers just in, 39,000 cases in America, up 20%, 512 dead. May they rest in peace. Switzerland up 25%, Belgium up 30%, Indonesia up 30%, Germany up 17%, France up 24%. Still the enigma with Merkel and her planes in Las Vegas what happened there and uh, we were hearing something interesting about the German connection in all of this 
But, of course, every New World Order country let this in. Here's a nice little graph comparing the cases inside and outside of China. As you can see, the orange flat line has been China according to their official numbers, which we don't believe, of course. And the blue line is the exponential growth of cases worldwide. So either this was a tremendous kamikaze attack or the blowback is so intense. But who would benefit from a blowback like this? It wouldn't necessarily be the Trump administration, would it? And uh, who's got the most to gain from this? Democrats, ladies and gentlemen. And I think we're going to find, uh, you know, the same kind of deep state fingerprints on this attack that we've seen on, you know, other attacks. Remember that coup d'etat in America when they tried to overthrow uh, Trump with their, you know, BS FISA courts and the like. And, um, you know, they were just planting evidence, making stuff up. I think we've got our suspects, ladies and gentlemen. And I think the best thing to do is just to contain this virus in the big cities and let it run its natural course. We'll have to see what happens there, ladies and gentlemen. Live shot of Fifth Avenue. Triple Six Fifth Avenue must be around there somewhere. Live shots. It looks like I am legend out there. Ladies and gentlemen, Baltimore will convert its convention center and the Hilton Hotel, no kidding, as field hospitals to accommodate the surge. And of course, that's not going to be enough. And uh, but it will be, you know, a center to triage people into the crematoriums. Ladies and gentlemen, Louisiana governor says his state is the fastest growing state in the world. Watch out for Louisiana catching up to the rest of them, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think of all these bodies just being transported? It's like this everywhere right now. It's like the plague. Bring out your dead. Let the dead bury the dead, ladies and gentlemen. Don't look back to Sodom and Gomorrah, if you know what I mean. And uh, let's see, what do they say here? In Madrid, according to reports in this one, they are now stocking the corpses in uh, at the ice rink. So you can expect your hockey stadiums to become makeshift morgues for the dead before they get trucked off to the incinerator. It's actually kind of smart. Um, you know, that's something that you probably want to recommend to your city council, to your mayor's office. Call them up and say, hey, you guys need to convert the ice rink into a to, into a huge morgue. They'll probably hang up on you, ladies and gentlemen. But maybe it'll, you know, maybe it'll get you on the radar. Pandemic. What do they say here? Uh, mixed reports on the chloroquine. For the most part, it's positive. But this report from Marseille in France says that uh, more people went into ICU after being treated with chloroquine than um, than those that didn't get it. We'll have to see. We're hearing individual cases from state television saying, you know, the chloroquine saved their lives. So is this just some kind of way to buy time until we find out what's going on? I think we could have a lengthy debate on how effective the chloroquine is going to be. First and foremost, since this is like airborne AIDS, ladies and gentlemen, what happened to the video guy? Since this is like airborne AIDS, even if they're able to, you know, eradicate the virus from the person, which is highly unlikely, um, it'll come back or the person will get reinfected. So the chloroquine is perhaps a 30 day solution. And if the chloroquine was so effective, don't you think the Chinese would have used it? I mean, it was the reason that they know how to use chloroquine for this is because it was effective in SARS and MERS. And so the Chinese would have been well aware that chloroquine is effective against, you know, this virus. And since they make all of the drugs out there, they certainly would have had a supply. And so you just have to wonder how reliable is it? We'll find out. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll find out. I mean, it's better to cling on to a little hope 
out there. But uh, obviously, there's a lot of questions that remain, uh, you know, unanswered at this stage, ladies and gentlemen. Check out that setup. That's the kind of gear you need. That's the kind of gear we needed back in January. Now that everybody's infected, it doesn't really matter that much anymore. Although you do want to reduce your uh, intake of new viral load as much as possible. It's not because you're infected that you can't get reinfected or super infected. No, we're in a live exercise here to oh, get this right. We some discussion about China and what they knew and when they knew it. And I've, I've been very critical. We, we a live exercise like Event 201, like Crimson Contagion. And we know that when they run their Gladio B Ops, their Operation Northwoods, if you will, there's always an exercise there to help facilitate uh, the delivery and to get people in position. And, you know, we've seen this numerous times. Oh, the exercise went real, re real world, like the 7 7 attacks. How many people remember that out there? And uh, we, we got some British uh, people showing up here, and they're like, oh, we're on lockdown too, bitches. Better late than never. I mean, they're obviously trying to kill you out there in the UK. Although the British Empire right now has a very low, has very low numbers. Makes you wonder, are they hiding it? Are they in denial? Or do they know something that we don't? Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have to get into that if we can. Now, of course, uh, you know, there's a lot of first responders around the world that don't have, you know, the basic getup. But it seems like the Fargo Police Department has got everything they need. You see that? That's my hometown. They've been watching the broadcast. You know what I mean? More than likely not. Yeah, there's just not enough time to kind of dwell on the fact that so many people are dying. It's just an, an endless stream of people coming in. As soon as we have a free bed, we have a new patient coming in who needs critical care. Once we get a patient in the ICU, I haven't seen any yet being weaned off the ventilator. So that's a, you know, a first-hand account from a male nurse. Um, you know, everywhere we look in the hospitals, I mean, it's, you know, it's like this. It's totally full, overflowing. Uh, people everywhere and uh, you know the the Western governments you know America Europe and the like they had months to prepare for this months to build up you know makeshift hospitals months to order ventilators months to you know order the chloroquine months to uh, get the masks and the other personal protection equipment months to warn people you know don't go to the Super Bowl parties. Don't go to the rallies. Don't go, uh, you know, do what you normally do. Try not to get infected. But instead, they just let the cruise ships dock. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, come to the rally. Go vote. Do all the things that you normally do. They've known this for months. Instead of, like, warning people, they basically ran a major pump and dump. You know, they were telling people everything's going to be fine while they were selling their stocks. You know what I mean? And I think that just tells you everything you need to know. Instead of warning people, they were just like letting people, you know, come in to the markets so that they would buy the stocks that they were selling. You know, because if you're going to sell at a high price, you need somebody to buy at a high price. And right now the government is pretty much buying everything at the fire sale. We're hearing they're, they're going to pump a trillion dollars into the market every day, quite literally. That's, you know, that's according to the mainstream news. And so if we've got a $20 trillion debt right now, maybe it's like $22 trillion, in less than a month, we're going to double our, our debt. <laughs> you know, this thing is just going to implode. And everything that they've told you since the beginning is a lie. You know, at, at first they were telling you it's just old people over 80. You know, you don't have to worry about it. Now we're finding out over half the cases are between 20 and 50 and young children are getting it as well right so it's a, it's a total nightmare scenario they've been hiding it lying to you 
and you're about to find out how bad it's going to be. The Surgeon General says this week is going to be, you know, super bad, ladies and gentlemen. And you have to wonder about these people that he's hiring, that Trump is hiring. We're, we're learning that the Dr. Fuki Fuchi Fukushima was uh, writing love letters to Hillary. We're learning uh, all sorts of things. There's at least two people that have been showing up to these uh, you know, conferences, which is probably happening right now. But two people at these conferences that were, uh, you know, total Sodom and Gomorrah. They got the list from San Francisco. I mean, who does that? You know what I mean? I thought this was a conservative kind of thing. But they've been hiring nothing but traitors and Judases in disguise for the most part since the beginning. And the ones that weren't, I mean, they just basically threw to the wolves like General Flynn. And like, we're not going to get into all of that. You know, who's rolling out the 5G you know, who's letting Hillary go? We're not going to get into all that. Who let the Wuhan super virus in? Right? Who let this, you know, bioweapon in? Well, this administration did. So, you just have to wonder, ladies and gentlemen, whose side are they on? What happened to the video guy? Video guy is on vacation. For sure. Okay, so... Getting back to the news. Surgeon General says, be afraid. Be very afraid. It's going to get bad. Super bad. Ladies and gentlemen. By January 3rd, Chinese authorities had already ordered COVID uh, virus samples destroyed, silenced uh, doctors, censored public concerns online. But... uh, You know, as they try to rewrite the story, they're like, you know, our response since January 15th was to notify Americans of how bad it was. Now, here's another thing that's really interesting. And, you know, there's two weapons labs in Wuhan. There's the Chinese government lab that's 20 miles away. And then there's the Chinese CDC that's three blocks away, 300 yards away from the seafood market. Guess where this thing came from? I think it came from the Chinese CDC, which is run by, you know, which is run in cooperation with our CDC. And uh, there's a you know high probability that both sides were in on it. You know, this is very convenient for the New World Order. You know, most of these uh, socialist communist countries out there Uh, have huge death taxes and they have huge you know financial burdens due to due to the uh, boomers out there so you know there's a big win-win when it comes to killing off uh, you know a maximum amount of people out there that's what happens when you give governments an incentive to kill you they'll fucking do it ladies and gentlemen they'll liquidate your ass you better believe it Be sure to like and share out there. Get this information out there. Get people over here. We're heavily censored, banned. There's no free speech. It's all, you know, it's all a scam as far as freedoms in America. You don't have a freedom of choice. You know, it's, there's no elections. It's a selection. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a big club. Now, uh, we're learning that this, this case here is about the the patient zero in Italy and uh, she was working let's see let's just translate this the original uh, person who brought the virus to Italy was the Dean of the Wuhan Central China Normal University he arrived in Europe on January 22nd and developed symptoms in in Italy he was hospital hospitalized for 49 days and recovered hospitalized for two months virtually and of course uh, a member of the communist party and the like but there's no telling how many people they sent around the world to seed this pandemic but you can bet that you know they sent operatives into congress into the white house they've you know they've infected everybody ladies and gentlemen what is this oh i think we're on the wrong thread. There we go. Back to the news. Ah, this is 
hilarious. Please note, the post-apocalyptic fiction section has been moved to current affairs. Ah ha 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 ha. Ooh, they knew, but didn't tell us, and sold stock. They knew, and didn't tell us, and they sold stock. Let that sink in. They knew. They didn't tell you, and they sold their stock instead. Should we say that again? I think it's really important that you understand this. All these people on television, they knew, but they didn't tell you. Instead, they sold their stock. And now the pump and dump is complete. Lab-made coronavirus triggers debate, ladies and gentlemen. This is actually a report from 2013. The creation of chimeric SARS-like viruses has scientists discussing the risks of gain-of-function research. Now, they just recently kind of, uh, you know, reinstated gain-of-function research. It had been banned for quite some time for obvious reasons. And gain-of-function means that they take a virus and they, you know, they basically run it through a series of... Uh, passages as they call it to make it more virulent and they select mutants that exhibit you know some kind of uh, destructive trait uh, in any case uh, you know there's a lot to be said about uh, you know biological you know research programs like this bioweapons research programs we're probably not going to dwell on it I think it's obvious at this stage you know uh, how bad it is but this was a procession of uh, you know, of dead bodies. I think we saw that. Trump releases supply of hydroxychloroquine for immediate use in New York. We'll have to see what difference it makes. As of right now, the death, you know, the numbers keep going up. And so if this was the miracle cure, you'd think it would just go down to zero. So we're waiting for it to go down to zero. The longer it takes for it to go down to zero, the worse it looks. So you'll just have to see. What are people seeing out there? Are you seeing any uptick in activity, ambulances, police? I mean, a lot of people are locked down now. But uh, that's mostly for the big cities. If you're out there in the country, you could probably still you know, do whatever you normally do out there. But it just depends. You know, it depends where you are. Uh, what's this? Never occurred to the executives of our you know, medical supply industry uh, that masks might be in high demand. For two months they've known. They sold their stocks, but they certainly didn't order things that might save lives. That's even worse, you know. Had they not told anybody to, you know, try to not induce a panic, fine. But did they get the supplies that people would need? like the ventilators, like the masks, like the emergency, you know, hospitals and the like. Oh no, they're just doing all of that now when it's way too late. What about the tests? I mean, we didn't even talk about the tests. And we're still waiting, you know, for the tests. And now they're saying, oh, it's not even worth it. Everybody's infected. And so what do you do? Uh, we recommend you do everything you can to boost your immune system right now. You should find out what that means and take it seriously. We've listed a few things in the video description on the ScrewTube channel. Uh, some plants that you really want to get. And you might be able to find some kind of uh, detox elixir with a lot of these plants already in it. So just go to your herbal store and start looking at you know, detox for the liver, for the kidneys. See what kind of elixirs you can find. It'll make a huge difference. Drink lots of water, piss out this virus, uh, reduce your virus load, uh, you know, flatten the curve in your body as much as you can. And, um, you know, the less virus you have in you, the less symptoms you'll have. But there's a huge correlation, a direct correlation between virus load and severity of symptoms. Again, this is gonna be like the forever flu uh, ladies and gentlemen, and so you want to do everything you can to manage this disease until, uh, you know, something better comes along. And, you know, I think we can keep our our fingers crossed when it comes to chloroquine or, you know, whatever uh, might be out there on the shelf. 
Now, of course, the the Democrats are at it again, calling you a racist for you know saying that this virus came from China, or calling it the the Wuhan super virus is probably a very racist kind of thing, and you know that's all they have left is name calling. They certainly can't really talk about the issues for the most part. And whatever they do say that sounds appealing, it just ends up like San Francisco or L.A. or something, you know, tens of thousands of homeless people. It looks like a dump, you know. Um, so, you know, their words are cheap. But pay attention to, you know, what you've been seeing for the last few years. You're a racist. You're a Nazi and the like. It's going to come up here in another story. Uh, pretty soon. Just remember that that's who these Democrats are. Uh, two passengers from the Diamond Princess. Remember that cruise ship at the very beginning of this outbreak? You know, it was like two months ago nearly. Maybe like a month and a half. Well, those people are just dying now. Ladies and gentlemen. The forever flu. Never goes away. Uh, let's see. In the midst of the COVID crisis and social distancing... German police orchestrate a nationwide raid on neo-Nazis, the neo-Nazi anti-Semitism scourge. Germany has more confirmed cases than Iran. So this is rather interesting because all the Democrats, all the liberals out there, all the losers are calling you a xenophobe, a racist. And here we're seeing you know, all of the Nazis being picked up in a nationwide roundup in Germany. And this is reported by the BBC. This isn't just Cynthia McKinney, 9-11 style. So here, you know, you know that the Democrats are calling you Nazis. And here you're seeing them conduct a nationwide raid under the fog of war, if you will, to round up all the Nazis. So, if you do the math, you're a Nazi, they're coming for all the Nazis. You're a Nazi, they're coming for all the Nazis. You're a Nazi, they're coming for all the Nazis, according to the BBC. Any questions? So chances are the goon squads will be coming. You know, if you're you know a white conservative, you must be a Nazi and they'll be coming after you in the name of liberal social justice. So, you know, they're infected anyways, ladies and gentlemen. Where, what do we know about these drugs that they're putting out there? Um, check out this uh, article here. It's, it gives a fairly uh, decent description of what's being tested out there. We've seen a few other drugs uh, come on the radar. There was something that we wanted to mention we haven't added it to the video description uh, just yet. And uh, where or oh, where did we put it is the question. I guess we'll have to find it and uh, talk about it. But there was something that seemed rather interesting that we hadn't seen before. Where did we put it? Ah, there it is. Losartan. L-O-S-A-R-T-A-N, a hypertension drug that reduces blood pressure by preventing a hormone uh, called angiotensin, which must be like ACE1, uh, from binding to receptors. Now, there's a lot of, uh, you know, mixed uh, PR when it comes to uh, blood pressure medication. And some stories are saying it increases your risk uh, because it forces your body to use uh, ACE2 more, but there might be something to this uh, Losartan. Um, and I think we probably tweeted uh, something about that. It might have been in this uh, article as well. Bloomberg spent almost a billion dollars in three months on his failed campaign, yet he's mysteriously hiding when it comes to helping Americans through the coronavirus. That's the pure de definition of a Democrat. Ladies and gentlemen, and there is something else, uh, you know, we didn't load up, so we're just going to kind of load it up brutally if we can. But essentially, uh, event 201, 
was sponsored by John Hopkins and the Bloomberg School of Public Health. And so, you know, it's kind of interesting that they would blow a billion dollars on an election that they were never going to win. But, you know, where, where are they now? Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see what else we got in the news. The U.S. government is giving us a 30-day free trial of communism. Think to cancel that uh, option at any time. Pretty interesting. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Ooh, cartoonish neo-Nazis are the TV industry's favorite villain these days. They look and act like the stereotypes, but they don't have and they don't have any redeeming qualities. They're just meant to be evil and despicable. The goal is clear to paint everyone that is pro-white with the same brush. So obviously, if you're a white boy out there, and you don't want to get invaded by Somalis like in Minnesota, then you must be a fucking racist. Imagine there's no celebrities. You know, that's a song that's worth singing. Imagine, you know, that there's no celebrities. It's easy if you try, ladies and gentlemen. In Italy, 4,000 medical staff have been infected by the virus. They've got the masks, they've got the visors, they've got the gloves. And the reason that this is happening is because the, the virus itself is 0.1 microns, if not less, in size, which will easily go through an N95, N100 mask. You really have to get something you know, high quality, like the movie Outbreak. And in any case, everybody's already been infected. But then again, at this stage, it's really about reinfection. Look at these monkeys, man. They're just flying out of nowhere, hitting the bell. And they love it, too. Anyways, we'll get into that. You think you're having a bad day? You should see the way this president is being treated by the media. It's horrible. It's horrible. You think you're having a, you know, a bad day in the lockdown, uh, you know, spending your whole day at Costco just for you know, a couple rolls of toilet paper getting infected you thought your day was bad because you lost your job you thought your day was bad because you don't have the secret antidote like trump you know you thought your day was bad well look trump you know he's he's getting blasted by everyone right now how could you let this virus in how could you let this snake in trump and i think we'll find out the answer to that he's a wartime president now he's he's suspended the constitution you're his bitch so you better be nice what does this say? Uh, a clinical trial that was uh, that has 3,200 patients uh, in seven different countries is testing four different types of treatments. We're seeing all sorts of uh, clinical trials, if you will, in hospital uh, with you know on-the-shelf drugs. We'll get uh, you know something soon, but it's important to remember that they can't even cure the common cold they can't cure you know hiv for the time being for the most part we're hearing you know of a few cases one or two cases but for the most part there's no cure for a virus the virus is a hack it's hacking your program ladies and gentlemen and uh, that's a very interesting conversation i'm sure you've heard of dna every living you know creature uh has dna you know Cats, dogs, trees, birds, people. It's all the same genetic code, same alphabet, same logic. And, um, you know, it's programming. It's nanotechnology at its finest. And, um, you know, a virus attempts to hack that, uh, that program just like uh, a computer virus. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that they don't spend a whole lot of time on in school, you know, as far as, you know, what does it mean that every living creature has DNA? What does that mean exactly? Well, without DNA, there's no life. Without the program, without the programming language, there's no program. And, uh, you know, that's something that they... You know, try to ignore in public schools. 
just like they try to ignore the law of biogenesis, which says that it takes life to, to get life. You can't get something living from something non-living, ladies and gentlemen. And the reason for that is because you need the programming language to get something living. And, you know, for more on that, people should check out the uh, documentary Unlocking the Mysteries of Life. Unlocking the Mysteries of Life. That's a very interesting, uh, you know, scientific documentary on where life comes from. But, you know, the DNA tells you that life was designed. This whole world was designed. And whatever we're experiencing now, it's part of the plan, believe it or not. You know, this, you know, definitely looks like, you know, pre-tribulation rapture. But I think there'll be time for that, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that, you know, your job description is in the Bible. Remember who sent you out there, ladies and gentlemen. Wherever you go, say that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils, raise the dead, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you're called to do. Help those people that you can out there and, uh, you know, let the dead bury the dead. What can we say? Anyways, uh, what's this? Uh, this says the coronavirus spread uh, across China. Uh, and flew to cities around the world. By the time travel stopped in late January, it was too late. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're saying this now. Um, let's see what else we got. This is kind of like a very interesting uh, graph of uh, where things are. As you can see, we're actually ahead of the pack here. Um, we're just a couple days behind everybody else in terms of the script, but we should expect... Uh, you know, the full Wuhan here in the coming days. And look, you know, if you look at the fact that China right now is missing 20 million people, according to phone records, according to, you know, official documents, uh, and that 350 million people were locked down at the height of, you know, the epidemic out there, which is roughly, you know, the size of the U.S. population. We could, in theory, expect numbers around there. Um, 20 million people in the next couple months. The CDC openly admits 2 million people are going to die in America if, uh, if we don't stop this thing in the next few months. So, you know, what's that going to look like? 20 million people, um, you know, that's on average... 20,000 people per major U.S. city? No. Uh, 200,000 people per major U.S. city on average. Uh, if it's 20 million people. If it's only 2 million, 2 million people, then it's 20,000 per city. So we're looking at something between 20,000 and 200,000 people per major city in the U.S. dead. And I think that's that's doable. So uh, we'll just see uh, what happens there. But that'll definitely make a difference in the next election. You know, especially if it's like 20 million libtards gone. I mean, that's like a third of their voter base. Um, that would definitely be a nice thing, uh, politically speaking. Police enforcing the coronavirus uh, in Rio. I thought this was like an interesting video, but it's not showing up. Of course, it's not showing up. No, something went wrong, they said. They must have pulled that video. It was pretty nice. Uh, oh, well, what is this? Oh, this is them trying to lock down, like, it must be like Baltimore. No, New Jersey, whatever. And this guy's like, I don't give a fuck, you know. And, uh, you know, the cops are just, you know, basically surrounded, surrounded by the hood out there. And, you know, it's like this in every, you know, major city around the world. Neighborhoods just like this is like, you know, the no-go zones and the like. And uh, look, it's easy to criticize, 
to a certain extent. But I think this is kind of like the attitude that everybody should have right now instead of, instead, you know, you see white people for the most part, they're just like, yes, let me just go in and grab my ankles. Oh, you want to penetrate without the astral glide? That's wonderful. I'm ready for you. So instead of having that attitude of just going silently into the night, I think we, you know, we need to kind of like grow a big pair out there and, you know, show, you know, show them who's boss, to be quite honest. You know, if if we send in our entire military to Iraq, to, the, to, the, to a third world country, and we couldn't even lock that down, we're not going to lock down America. The question is, do you want to get locked down? Do you think it's a good idea? What we've discovered is that every time they lock, they lock down, it gets worse. So there's a correlation between people like being locked in their homes and the onset of symptoms. Now, obviously, there's people that are just dropping dead, you know, outside a home, but we definitely see a huge uptick in, uh, you know, in, in deaths as soon as they lock people down. Why? Uh, you know, we've got our theories on that. Most people, you know, once they're locked down, you know, they're looking for something to do. And what's the first thing that they do pretty much? Power clean. They, get, they bring out the bleach, all of the disinfectants, and they're just huffing that, uh, you know, all day. Um, and they're dealing with like a respiratory illness that thrives on inflammation. And so our theory is, is that there's a direct link between uh, air quality, pollution, uh, and uh, the onset of symptoms. And when you look at, you know, which regions are being hit the worst right now in the Western world, like Lombardy, Northern Italy, heavily polluted, probably the dirtiest spot in Europe. Um, by far and New York the dirtiest spot in America by far so air quality has a huge plays a huge role in the severity of symptoms as much as virus load pretty much and so you know as people are just stuck indoors you know they're going to be doing all sorts of things uh, in a confined space that includes huffing on uh, chemicals and you know if there's more than one person uh, in that uh, living arrangement, then the virus load will go up. Uh, again, you know, every infected person is like a lit cigarette, and the secondhand smoke or the virus shedding uh, from the person accumulates in the room, just like secondhand smoke. And so the more people that are infected in the same room, the higher the virus load in the individuals, uh, and it just basically blows up. So the lockdown is really the trigger to making this thing go apeshit. As soon as they lock everybody down, then that's when you know, the bodies are really going to start hitting the floor. And you can see them shaping their rhetoric right now. It's like, oh, look at these people out in the park, like getting fresh air. Mm -mm -mm. We don't want that. You're not respecting our guidelines. You know, they let this shit in. And then they're like, oh, you're not respecting our guidelines. I mean, I think the entire country, the entire world should just basically, you know, give the royal salute to the television and to all of these imperial masters, you know, all of these crooked officials that would rather sell stock than let you know what's going on. Give them the royal finger. They want to lock you down. Fuck you. You know, they want to come in door to door, check your temperature. Fuck Some discussion you. about China and what they knew and when they knew it. And I've, I've been very critical. We... we, we yeah. No, we're in a live exercise here yeah. to get this right. They're in a live exercise. They're, what the fuck, video guy? We Shut the f fuck the video guy too, man. But look, they're going to come out and they're going to try and exterminate you. And, you know, they're going to do everything they can. They've been doing everything they can to exterminate you all the way up until now. The fluoride, the vaccines, the GMOs, the pesticides, the chemtrails, the death towers, you know, name your eugenics program. These people are out to get you. And now they've released a super virus and they're spreading it around everywhere. And they're like, you know, breathe in the chlorine, breathe in the bleach, breathe in, you know, all that shit. And, you know, I think people should just tell, you know, these people, these nice people uh, to go fuck themselves.
you know, plain and simple, all of them, the, the whole works. I don't care. You know, I don't care what department you represent right now, what agency, you know, for the most part, you know, you're going to come over here and, and say whatever, when you don't know shit about nothing, go fuck yourselves and pardon my language. But I mean, that's just basically, you know, my attitude right now when it comes to these people, uh, regardless of who they are and how nice they are, the, mo the moment that they try to enforce, you know, the laws of this beast system, especially at this stage. You know, go fuck yourselves. You know, I don't want to hear none of that, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Getting back to the news, if we can. What else we got? Uh, yeah. Not sure what that was all about. Oh, here's people, you know, doing their shopping, freaking out in the ghettos. You know, it's the same thing in, in every country. And here's some more of it. You know, they're just going crazy. So, look, let them go crazy. Let them go fight over, you know, toilet paper. Hopefully you got your supplies and you're not out there, you know, fighting for whatever, like it's Black Friday. And this is exactly what, you know, we said was going to happen. I'm sure, you know, those of you that have been watching this for the last two months unfold, it's like, wow, man, it's exactly the way you describe it. Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, it's only going to get worse. So prepare for the last stand. And look, you know, nobody wants to pull the trigger, but nobody wants to go to the, you know, FEMA camps either. And so, look, you've got a decision to make. You know, do you want to go out like a bitch or, you know, you want to take a few of these uh, assholes out with you? Uh, that's the question. I think, you know, most people out there that have never experienced the inner city or the attitude of the inner city, you know, probably aren't prepared for what's going to happen next. The people in the inner city are more prepared for urban warfare than, you know, most of the cowboys out there. Because, you know, when it when push comes to shove, most people out there aren't going to pull the trigger. You know, they're just going to be like, "Oh, I give up. You know, take me in. Bring me bring me to wherever, you know, you're going to take me and then it's and you're just going to end up in the history books, you know. Here's the last picture of, you know, of this group before they went into the gas chamber, you know. History repeats itself, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're seeing some activities uh, out there in Greece. It looks like the migrants are trying to penetrate. Why did Facebook reserve 720,000 masks? Well, that brings up a really good question. Now, they say they had all these masks because of the, you know, the endless fires that were happening in California. And since this virus isn't going to go away... It's coming back next winter for a full winter. So you've got this summer to prepare, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But they're going to be dealing with the virus and the fires in California, you know, next fall. You know what I mean? So they're all they're all pretty much dead, whether it's, you know, now or, you know, seven months from now. They're all pretty much dead. The clock is ticking. You know what I mean, they had their fun. They, you know, I, I see people, I see nice people in the audience are like, oh, they're censoring you again. Yeah, yeah. Let them enjoy it while they can. <laughs> Don't look back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't look back to Sodom and Gomorrah. They're getting what they wanted. Judgment Day. And it's coming for them. Now the question is, will it come for you? You got to protect yourselves. You got to make sure that you're ready to uh, go through whatever might happen next. You know, and that includes, uh, you know, a, co a, a total breakdown of the supply chain, total breakdown of society. And, you know, it may be Mad Max. By this time next year, it may be Mad Max. It may not. But uh, chances are nothing will be the same. Again, nobody's going to forget 2020 anytime soon. Uh, what is this? Access to experimental drug put on hold. Uh, this made the, the news quite a bit today. Uh, Remdesivir, which has been touted since the beginning, an Ebola drug that has been kind of repurposed, uh, which is actually an RNA polymerase uh, inhibitor, uh, is now being pulled. They must have saw something that they didn't like. And uh, they're saying, oh, the, de the demand is outstripping uh, the supply. 
it would seem like. But, uh, you know, they've had this drug for, for quite some time. They're probably sitting on, you know, a huge stockpile of it. And it's not working out the way they hope, more than likely. But, look, uh, the television says it, it works, so we'll have to see. France uh, begins building military field hospitals. I think we've got the video of this somewhere. Where is it? Is the question with the video guy. You never know these days. Can we find it? Uh, again, you know, yesterday, you know, we touched on, uh, you know, quite a few things happening in October 2019. We think that this outbreak, you know, was released from a vial or injected into somebody or escaped a lab uh, sometime in October, maybe before. You know, the, the competing theory, which is rather interesting, is that it escaped Fort Detrick uh, sometime last summer. And we were hearing about all of these uh, mysterious uh, vaping illnesses, but in fact it was uh, the beginning of the outbreak. And when you look at the... Um, the CAT scans of those people that were affected by the vaping illness, it looks just like the coronavirus. You know, you've got the ground glass opacity, the lungs just completely thrashed. And it's like, you know, people have been vaping for 20 or 30 years. You know, is it because they're juuling like, you know, like mad? Uh, is that it? Or did it escape the lab and so what they're you know the the competing theory is that this thing escaped Fort Detrick it infected people including people uh, you know in the barracks in Kentucky or no Maryland <laughs> Kentucky is something different but uh, in Maryland and uh, and this is where you know these people come from that went to uh, this military world games. So they're thinking that perhaps there's like an innocent explanation for how this virus ended up in Wuhan and it wasn't the Wuhan CDC. I think if everything's equal, proximity is uh, the clearest indicator. It's kind of like the, um, the Novichok attacks in London, uh, well, in Salisbury. Uh, you know, they were like, oh, the Russians did it. The Russians, you know, imported this highly toxic substance, you know, two, three thousand miles away in a fragile vial that could have broke at any minute. Or it escaped the, the Porton Down bioweapons lab that was just two blocks away. So if you look at the Novichok attack, you know, was it the Russians or was it Porton Down? Chances are it was Porton Down. In the Wuhan attack, was it Fort Detrick or was it, uh, you know, the Wuhan... Uh, you know, Institute of Virology or the uh, Wuhan CDC. Chances are it's f fucking video guy. Tired of the video guy, man. Seriously. What happened here? This is just bull. Anyways, you know, we think it's probably more than likely the Wuhan CDC that was right next door. That was the closest weapons lab to the to the wet market so uh, again chances are it was the Wuhan CDC which means it's our CDC as well which means that Trump and you know his counterpart uh, were in on it and this was our you know initial Intel was that you know this had been agreed upon um, during the trade deal you know the China US tra China trade deal phase one and the like. But we're also getting indicators that this was set in motion uh, way back in 2016, maybe even before. And we're hearing that, you know, there's a lot of uh, liberals uh, that are involved behind the scene. But look, you know, politics today is, uh, you know, just like it was yesterday and 10 years ago, they're, you know, both sides are on the same team. It's like a wrestling match, you know. And uh, no matter, uh, you know, who you vote for, who you root for, you know, it's the it's the WWE that wins. You know, they're the ones cashing in the ticket. You know what I mean? So, look, I think there's a there's a lot of uh, scenarios that pretty much add up to the same thing. You know, the New World Order did it. 
the Luciferian New World Order did it. And, uh, you know, they're going to try and exterminate, you know, blood sacrifice people and then usher in this radical uh, dystopian, you know, world. And right now they've suspended constitutional rights. They've, you know, they're all wartime presidents. They're all looking to, you know, be the heroes of the day uh, with chloroquine or whatever, you know, antidote they might deliver. And I think that it's important to hold these people accountable because since 9-11, we've seen nothing but endless wars, Gladio B events, you know, the full perversion of our society. Um, you know, they're raping and molesting and grooming children everywhere and transitioning them and, you know, all sorts of abominations. They're trying to ban the Bible and the like. And I think, you know, these people are a threat to humanity. They're a threat to life. Um, and, you know, this virus is the cure. So let this virus do its job and then mop up, ladies and gentlemen. And never let this happen again. I think we need, uh, you know, a Puritan society. We need a Christian homeland out there. The Jews can have a homeland. Why can't we have a homeland? Don't ask me where the video went uh, because it's gone. We were going to play a video of, you know, them building this uh, makeshift uh, tent or whatever. A huge spike in coronavirus cases in Australia after the ruby princess not the diamond princess but another princess the ruby princess cruise was allowed to dock in sydney without any tests just like new jersey look at them now and it's summer well at least it was summer yeah we just changed seasons here but um you know this thing will spread in the summertime look at them now Numbers are skyrocketing, but it's still, you know, way low compared to other countries. In, in fact, you know, you look at Canada, you look at Australia, you look at the UK, the remnants of the British Empire, and their numbers are way low compared to somebody else. And so, you know, we're thinking porting down all over again. In fact, if you look at the smoking gun document from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, Australia's name is on that document. So you got the back door to the five eyes uh, right there on the smoking gun so but you know they let these cruise ships in they let the virus in and they're like oh we gotta lock you down we gotta suspend all your rights we're gonna come take your guns we're gonna do the checkpoints we're gonna go door to door to do a wellness check and if you happen to be a conservative you're a fucking Nazi bye bye you know that's how these people think right so there's a quick answer to that you know you open the door and then you sh you know you just open fire, you know, and then ask questions. Are you okay? Do you want me to check your temperature? Should I call somebody? I hope you have insurance, bitches. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, this is the latest video from Spain, so their numbers are you know skyrocketing. But every hospital, I mean, whether it be Italy, Spain, you know, uh, you name it. Wuhan, the east of France, New York, they're all looking like this. In fact, there's, you know, there's some videos, I think we, we showed it, where like people are just sleeping on the floor. They're on the floor. And uh, it was pretty much like that in the UK before this virus hit. Can't imagine what it's going to be like in the UK after this virus takes off. Uh, this was a raid, it uh, looks like, in Panama. But you'll be seeing this, you know, this wasn't Wuhan. You'll be seeing this everywhere. They'll be raiding everywhere. Hopefully they won't be raiding you. Chloroquine, known as, known to be effective against coronavirus since 2005. So why didn't the Chinese use it? Why are they missing 21 million people if this is so effective? And the problem, again, is that even if this is able to, you know, bring down the virus load and clear it out for the most part in the system, there's always going to be you know, some virus that remains. Probably underneath the threshold of detection, but it'll be something that remains. And once the chloroquine is, you know, flushed out of the system, which usually takes about 30 days, um, it'll come back. This virus will come back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the forever flu. Oh, and this was kind of creepy from Creepy Biden. Uh, I mean, it looks like he was having, you know, a, a senior moment, and then 
you know, here comes the wife. You know, like, oh, way to go, babe. And then he's like, comes back to the world. And he's like, uh, how long was I out? You know what I mean? And he still sits there like, shit. Uh, okay, New York doctor says his hospital is already using uh, chloroquine and the patients and zero deaths. So if that's true, then we're going to see zero deaths from now on, right? So we'll see if that's true or if that's propaganda. But you, you would think that, you know, everybody's known this since 2005. Chloroquine is a, is a thing to use. Everybody's been using it. Everybody's been talking about it since day one. And yet the deaths keep going up. So, look, we'll have to see. Tom Cotton debuts a plan to take pharma production back from China. I think that'll be kind of like the, you know, the uptick or the kickstart, if you will, in the, in the reconstruction is that we're going to have to make our own shit from now on. You know, we can't just outsource it to China anymore. Maybe we'll outsource it to Mexico and they can become the new China and bio nuke us. We'll see. You know what I mean? They want Texas back, ladies and gentlemen. Severe shortness of breath. Uh, Democrat uh, Ben McAdams hospitalized with breathing trouble. That's a standard type of syndrome there. Uh, let's see. Again... You know, you really want to check out uh, the video description. The plants there uh, will make all the difference in terms of uh, breathing. But fresh air, there's no replacing fresh air. You need fresh air 24-7. Ventilate nonstop. Be obsessive about it, especially when you're cooking. Bag up anything that, uh, that has an odor, perfume, uh, incense. Don't breathe it in. It'll irritate your lungs. It'll make it worse. Georgia girl, 12 years old, with no pre-existing medical conditions, is on a ventilator right now. Atlanta, Georgia. Coronavirus symptoms start slowly, and then they worsen quickly. And uh, I guess that brings us back to yesterday's news. You know, there was uh, quite a few reports, other reports of, like, you know, people 30 days, 60 days later still fighting you know, the disease, uh, they're relapsing, they're dying uh, after being given the all clear. And just because the chloroquine, you know, flushes uh, the virus out of their nasal cavity, which is essentially what they're testing, uh, that doesn't mean that it's out of their system. So I think, you know, um, it's going to be a while before we uh, find a therapy that works, but look, for the time being, this is all there really is to report on. But, um, you know, managing the disease by boosting your immune system uh, is probably the best way to go until, you know, something else uh, pans out. And, uh, you know, managing your fatigue, uh, getting, you know, a few select minerals uh, and vitamins will help. Vitamin K, vitamin D, vitamin C. Uh, magnesium is a must. Go get some magnesium that isn't coupled with calcium. Uh, magnesium and zinc, uh, especially. And, um, you know, get some of these uh, anti inflammatory herbs like uh, uh, turmeric. You, know, you should be, you know, eating, you know, a couple tablespoons worth of uh, turmeric a day bring down the inflammation um, and the like as well as you know quite a few other things that are listed in the video description and we'll have to leave it there for this broadcast you know we'll see what ha we'll see what tomorrow brings you know there was quite a few other uh, news stories to, to look at uh, a couple other aspects of this crisis to look at but right now we're seeing the suspension of constitutional rights we're seeing martial law roll in we're seeing, um, you know, in the preparation to this uh, outbreak, we're seeing numerous uh, pandemic simulations, events, uh, event 201, October 18th. We've got uh, Crimson uh, Contagion, which was uh, October 2019. That, too, was a pandemic influenza exercise. And, of course, we've got the, uh, the World Games uh, out there uh, in Wuhan. Uh, that was, uh, 
that was going on at in October 2019 as well. So I think that you know there's something there. That's uh, that's too many pandemic you know events uh, all at the same time while the real one was kicking off to ignore, uh, which happened to be released just a few blocks away from the Chinese uh, CDC which is our CDC in China. It's like, you know, McDonald's in China, except it's the CDC in China. Th literally three blocks away from the Chinese CDC, this is where this thing erupts. So, you know, I think there's a lot to be said about, you know, who let this virus in. And, you know, they all knew, and they didn't tell you. Instead, they decided to sell stocks. They saw these videos, people dropping dead, children included, you know, everything being locked down like it escaped the lab, like a horror movie. And they told you nothing. Not NBC, not ABC, not Fox News, not President Trump, not Nancy Pelosi, none of them. So you can be a Democrat, you can be a Republican if you want to. You know, you can brand yourself that. But that's just another word or another name for New World Order shill, ladies and gentlemen. So... You know, don't be that guy or girl out there. Keep maintaining your supplies. Uh, keep watching out what's you know going on in the uh, you know in your city, and you know you'll know when the time comes, ladies and gentlemen. And you know, look, chances are uh, you know you're well prepared, and you'll be able to write out this story much better than most people. And by the time this is all over, it'll be. You know, the numbers will be a lot more manageable. So we'll leave it there. Till the next time, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to this, you are the resistance. <laughs>